What is going on, obscure mic people? It's Bart coming at you yet again with an exclusive, maybe. Maybe I'll get this out before anyone else. Maybe I won't. I don't know. But Behringer did not send over. I paid my own money for the uh, the D2 Podcast Pro. Large diaphragm, dynamic podcast microphone, XLR, USB stand, and all kinds of stuff. Pretty big box. My head's big. The box is big. That's what she might have said. Let's go ahead and do an unboxing. Check this thing out. Hook it up. Run it through its paces. Talking on the Shure SM58. Be sure to go watch that 58 and uh, XM8500 video, but also more importantly, or as importantly, vote because we're about done comparing these two, which one you'd rather have for the money. This runs 129 bucks. So I think this is a good comparison to this. Let's go. All right. So big box. Let's open it. Let's see what we got here. What do we got here? I'll tell you what. Uh, that's such a big lid. Oh, such a big lid. Good Lord. This box is huge. All right. We open it up. Shock mount underneath. We got a foam windy. Very thin. Huge girthy opening. We got a USB A to C cable. Behringer. Come on. Give us a C adapter. Give us, give us the C adapter hanging off there. Come on. We've got a Zoom-esque uh, stand for the microphone. I say zoom esque because the pod, uh, the zoom pod pack with the ZDM one comes with a stand very much like this, very, very much like this, but yeah, it's all plastic. It doesn't inspire a ton of confidence, but it will, it will do the job. It's better than a lot of the tripod stands that come with mics. Then we got the microphone, which, uh, ended up being a lot bigger than I expected it to be. That's a, uh, that's pretty good size. That is, uh, feels big in the hand. That's what someone might've said underneath all that. It looks like we've got ourselves a shock mount. I'll go through the mic stuff here in just a moment. I just want to get everything out. Uh, this is, that's a heavy plastic, but it is plastic. It does have a little knob there. I've got one like this. That's metal. So yeah, uh, the bracket there's metal. That's plastic. So we got a metal piece here, but then everything else seems to be plasticky, but shock mount. That's a nice touch. Here's the microphone. The body is plastic. Grills metal. I think the yoke mount is also plastic. This whole thing, the whole thing, the whole thing is plastic. That is a little bit annoying. If I, if I'm being honest, it is completely freaking plastic. We've got an XLR and a USB-C and a headphone jack here. We've got a 5 8 to 3 8 inch adapter into plastic. Probably a good thing if that's plastic. We got some tightening knobs. Ah, I'm I really thought this would have been metal. I'm I'm kind of confused. If I, I just I'm I'm a little 129 bucks for a whole lot of plastic. And that's not the greatest. It's okay, but that's that's plastic. Mute button. We've got a volume knob. No click, so it's just volume. Huh. No headphone adjustment, nothing like that. I mean, it's not a bad looking mic. It's just it's so plasticky. I can't lie. I'm just I'm just kind of disappointed at how cheaply made this thing apparently is. It looks okay. But it better sound fantastic for 129 bucks, considering the very plastic build. Even 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 the yoke mail, even even this is plastic. I that's that's just that's not cool, Behringer. Not cool at all. Let's hook it up. All right, and now we are on the what the hell ever? What's it called? The Podcast Pro, um, all plastic build. Sounds thin, sounds hollow, sounds, I mean, and, and again, when it coming on the video, squirt, <laughs> it, when it comes through on the video, it might sound okay, but I assure you, it's not that good. This is the podcast pro. This is the XM8500, which packs considerable amount of weight in the low end compared to the podcast pro. Which again, it doesn't sound like, it doesn't sound good. It doesn't sound bad, but it doesn't sound good. 
This is disappointing so far. Let's go back to this for a real quick second. XM8500, which sounds better. Stick this capsule in there. Do that. Maybe, maybe, maybe it sound. Come on. I, I, I'm going to end up eating this thing alive again. Like you can add a little EQ, a little bottom, but it, it's like this capsule. I've heard this capsule before. I swear it's a cheap run of the mill, like SM58 replacement capsule. It does not sound great. This is what an SM58 sounds like. And again, we've got considerably more of a well-rounded sound. And back to the Podcast Pro. I'm, uh, I am I am not thrilled that I paid $129 for this. If it had a metal build and it was like, if it sounded like this, I would have had no problems here. But this just sounds, feels cheap. What? the heck bearinger let's go ahead and do some tests and stuff then i'll go ahead and plug it in usb style hit them up style and we'll we'll keep going i'm gonna leave the windscreen on because it is part of it jank peter piper picked a peck of pickle pineapple pizza peter piper picked a peck of pickle pineapple pizza plosives are okay when you get right on top of the podcast pro not a lot of uh, proximity effect. You can't really eke out any more low end. It's just kind of the variable P. It's got the variable P, the variable plastic, keeping it sounding plasticky. I'm going to take the microphone, talking into the front of it. We're going to go 90 degrees off axis rejection, 180 degrees, 90 degrees, slowly back around to the front of the microphone. I might be a tad angry at this. I mean, it's, again... You got some perks, you got some decent accessories, you know, of the plastic variety, a lot of plastic, more plastic than I've seen since the show Nip Tuck. <sighs> I was genuinely excited about this. I thought Behringer's releasing a new mic. Last time they did that, it didn't work out too well. It was a bunch of USB mics that sucked balls, but I thought this time will be different. This time will be different, Behringer. This time you'll give us more of what we want. And did they? I don't think so. Again, it's not the worst sounding mic I've ever heard, but it's not good. In my opinion, it's not good. I hear a way too bright top end with not enough bottom to balance it out. Uh, with, with also a toppy mid section there. Mid section. It's just not great, and I'm I'm upset because this is way better. The XM8500, way better. Why has it been so long since you made a good mic, Behringer? Let's go USB mode. All right, now I've got the microphone in USB mode, and I've got I've got shit to talk about. A headphone amp sucks ass, sucks ass balls, all of it sucks all of it. It sucks everything available. Put it in front of it, it sucks. Headphone amp's terrible. It does not get very loud. The volume button seems to be for the headphones, not for the mic. This, this is this is just pure. This is bad. This is real bad. The sound about the same, at least from my tests uh, on my monitors here. Not much better than the XLR sound. I'm just thoroughly disappointed all the way around. There's better mics on Amazon with names you can't fucking pronounce than this. Just a fact. Behringer, you're fucking up. You're really... Yep. I'll just I'll just keep it at that. Come on, dog. On the BB SAR, I'm going to give this microphone plastic build and all. I have heard much worse, but we're talking about 129 bucks for this microphone. You know what? I'm going to... No. It's a one. This thing really honestly is garbage. If it was 59 bucks, I'd give it like a four, possibly worth buying cheap or used. Maybe someone out there on their phone is going to say, sound fine. It's 129 bucks. It's all plastic. The USB mode sucks. You can't even hear. You can barely hear. You got to get right up on it and yell into it to be able to hear the monitoring because the headphone amp sucks so bad. The volume knob is just for that. The mute button. See, I'm so mad at this thing. I forgot about the mute button. I'm so mad about this thing. I forgot about the mute button, which works pretty well, but doesn't keep it from being a one at 129 bucks. I'd rather go buy a Mayono 
300 handheld USB XLR mic, any Mayono or Fifine XLR USB combo mic or Relicart or you whatever you can find on there, XLR USB mic, except for maybe the Vague U, not Vague U, Pro AR. The Pro AR one was pretty bad, but at least it was metal. This thing sucks. Is what it is. I don't think it's good. I don't think you should buy it. I'll put the link in the description, but I sure as hell wouldn't buy it again. I'm kind of upset that I bought it the first time. I would ask for my money back, but Sweetwater kicks too much ass, and they send you candy when you buy stuff. Can't beat that. Pay $129 for three pieces of Bitto honey because I can't find it around here. <laughs> I wouldn't actually, but, you know, Bitto honey's pretty good. They also sent some dad's root beer barrels. Ten-year-old son loved that shit. He loves root beer stuff. Um, I'd rather have a mug of root beer than this mic. I'd rather have a root beer float than this mic. I would rather have a tree root and a glass of beer than this mic. I would rather have a friend named Mike Newman than this mic. That's, that was a low blow, Mike. I didn't mean that to discredit you at all. Mike Bauer, I do mean to discredit you. Not really. Love you guys. I love the mics. And not this one. I'm done. I, I don't know what else to say. I don't like this. I don't think you should buy it. And I think we're going to end the video on that. Obscure mics. Peace out.